Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jesse Mignocchi, Director of Promotions for KCR College Radio, and I'm joined today in the KCR Studios basement of Lambden Hall with some amazing people. Do you want to start and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Izzy. I'm the chair of Greenfest this year. Nice. Hi, I'm Nick, um, the drummer of Koshin. Hey, I'm Isaiah, I'm lead guitar for Koshin. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm the lead singer and rhythm guitar for Koshin. Hi, my name is Zen, and I'm lead bassist for Koshin. <laughs> lead bassist. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys for coming today. How are we all doing? Good. Pretty good. good. Pretty good. good. Yeah, I'm feeling good. good. Yeah. Pretty much. Well. <laughs> so this week. Uh, you guys are performing at Greenfest, opening for Denzel Curry. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, very um, I am the one, though. Yo, <laughs> he has to do that one, honestly. So, before I start, um, how does it feel like to be opening for an act like Denzel Curry? Like anyone is open to just jump in. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. And, and it's any other weird. any other band I've ever had to open for, I have to explain why it's sort of like a big deal or, or anything yeah. like with dental curry people just like no they know uh -huh. it's like oh shit it's dental curry. wait can i curse uh you're fine you're yeah Oh shit, it's Denzel Curry. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get the productions director, you know, green light. Zen. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna do that a lot. It's, it's all good. Zen, I know you said you love Denzel Curry. How does it feel like personally for you? I mean, definitely like what Nick was saying, it's it's kinda surreal. It's uh, one thing to be opening for an artist that you kinda just tell people and based on the name alone they really know kind of mm. across the board. Yeah. And uh, and growing up, you know, going in high school and stuff like that, I wasn't the biggest hip hop fan. But as far as some of the hip-hop I did dip into and listen to, Denzel Curry was a big part of it. So for me personally, yeah, it was like, I was through the roof and I found out about it. And I'm like, yeah, my friends back home are going to be like, this is so cool and shit. Like, I was so happy. That's good. Hell yeah, bro. I'm proud of you guys. Do you mind, uh, it's a little lo low on the audio. Okay. Can you turn the mic up or just move it closer? Okay. I don't know if I'm talking to the back of it. I feel like when I'm talking, I can be like, swing this thing this way. Like bam, 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 bam. Yeah, I don't know. Be, All right, good. solid. <laughs> so for Izzy, I just wanted to know, like, how does it work to get an act like Denzel Curry and like bringing the headliner on? Like, can you go into the process of that? Yeah, so Greenfest has a collaboration with Live Nation and they're kind of our middleman between us and whoever the headliner is gonna be. Mm -hmm. So we start out by making a wish list and it's a really long, you know, sizable list to, so that we give Live Nation a lot of choices to work with at first. Yeah. So we come up with a lot of different artists knowing our price range too. So some of them right off the bat are too expensive, but then we want someone that's at least decently well known. Yeah. So we create that wish list based on that and based on what we think students are gonna like. And after that wish list is created, we basically send it over to Live Nation and tell them what our budget is. So they take that and then they come back with an artist in mind mm. and just want you to confirm, yes, reach out to that person for us. Mm -hmm. So once we say yes, they do, and then the artist will then confirm yes or no mm -hmm. and if they say yes we either give the go ahead or we can you know talk about it one more time but we were really excited about Denzel Curry we mm -hmm. had a lot of big names I think to live up to because T-Pain was last year and that mm -hmm. was really fun and then yeah. Gunna was two yeah. years ago yeah. and Gunna was actually two years worth of budget because the year before that was 2020 so it was COVID and there was oh. no concert yeah um so i how did i had big shoes to fill but we yeah. tried our best and we're really excited about denzel curry being the headliner and that's kind of the process and how it works was it a lot of back and forth with like the artists you guys were given and what you wanted most of our communication was just through live nation rather uh -huh. than any um performers or artists mm -hmm. um it was a pretty smooth process though it was very concise I yeah. would say, because Live Nation, as you know, is a very large entity. Can you, like, give us any other names that you, like, were on that wish list? Well, there were some that were immediately out of our budget that we came up with. Somebody wanted Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, somebody wanted... Somebody said Kendrick Lamar, and I said, oh, I wish. <laughs> I said, I wish, but how much money do you think we have? Yeah. <laughs> Not enough. I, yeah. was, I was saying, bro, I Spice, that would be so... I will crazy. say that was on our list. But the list oh, yeah. is big, to yeah. be fair. It's yeah. it's a really large list because if you want them to come back with someone that is on your list, it's obviously good to have a lot of options. So we separated our artists by genre. We just know in the past that hip hop is hip hop Done tends well. to be yeah. popular. Mm -hmm. um, 
but we came up with a really big list and then what we did is we made a top 20 okay. of who we thought was both in our price range and would be popular with students so yeah. and i will say denzel curry was in our top 20 so yeah. we got lucky there oh, phenomenal yeah i'm loving that well great choice i think everyone <laughs> can say denzel curry is a phenomenal artist to go through for sure um being like sdsu students do you think this continued like event green fest and just like the environmental awareness has like improved the campus like culture I definitely think it has. It um, Greenfest is unique because it focuses almost exclusively on event planning. Yeah. So it's that week long series of events that's going on right now, and all of our events seek to promote and celebrate sustainability as mm -hmm. well as diversity and SDSU pride on our campus. So it's a great way to engage students, um, let them have fun, do some great activities. There's educational aspects to our events sometimes as well where they can learn a little bit about sustainability and what's currently going on. Yeah. And the concert is a nice way to bring attention to Green Fest and the rest of our events that we do that promote sustainability. So yeah. I definitely think it adds to our campus in that a lot of people have fun at our events and hear about our concert. And yeah, yeah I even just got into Green Fest because I went to the events last. in the first place and thought they were really fun. So, so this whole week is the Green Fest like kind of build up? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this whole week is Green Fest. We started yesterday with two events. It was Mind, Body, Soil and then Discover Your Roots. Um, today was the Sustainable Career Fair. And then we have events going throughout the week. And the week ends on Friday with the concert kickoff from 6 to 7 in the Student Union. And then obviously the concert at nice. 7. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, back to Koshin, can you guys give me some like background on how you guys started out as a band or like, yeah. yeah. Um, so it kind of just started out with me having this like idea of like, I just want to be a band in college, like join a band, be in a band. And I've written songs before, so it would be even the cherry on top if I could write music and then perform it in front of a college audience. And, you know, it came as just as a conglomerate and just asking these guys to fulfill that vision and to do that and you know at first it started with like frats and parties more covers but then it just became this actual thing where we got to play venues like pretty good ones big ones and you know just show after show i think there was one time we had like five shows a week wow it was crazy so that's kind of how it started and here we are now and you know we're all most of us are going to graduate or i guess us too but you know, it's, where did you guys like meet? Like, yeah. So it's been a lot of different. I'll just I'll just go into the okay. you know how Katie you know pulled and stole people. Um, <laughs> so I started out with Nick. Uh, I was like talking to my friend at a frat party, and I was like, I was like, yeah, I need a drummer. And he goes, oh, I, I know a guy. He lives in my dorm. And then that was Nick. He was you know just a freshman at the time. And shout I was out, just, shout <laughs> out to Colin. <laughs> shout out to Colin. Yeah. And then Hello. I was. Uh, then I played a show with Nick, our first show together, and the opening band was a uh, band that Isaiah was in, and, you know, I kind of just stole him from that band. I was like, hey, you should be our lead guitarist. Well, well actually, I introduced myself first. Oh, no. Not gonna lie, I was <laughs> like, can I be your lead guitarist? <laughs> there so, so. Put himself out there. She didn't even yeah. have to try that hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was, I was playing hard again, I guess. Um, and then me and Zen were both actually president and vice president of this club called Aztec Music Group on campus, which is a music business club. Co-collaborator. Co I was president. Yeah. Okay, Big Prezi yeah. Z. I was the VP. <laughs> a woman could never be president. <laughs> it's okay. I was the Kamala to his Biden, so all good. Um, but yeah, and he was like, oh, look, I'm going to tell him. Like, Will you shut up, man? <laughs> Joe, we did it. <laughs> we did it, Joe. <laughs> we did it, Ben. <laughs> That's the green. We must put a green fest. We did it. We did it, Ben. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Zen was like, "Oh, I'd be." I was like, "Cause I had like my homie Matt playing keyboard as the bass, and it was like fire. He was just playing like literal notes like on the synth." But I was like, Zen was like, "Do you need a bassist?" I was like. Yeah, I guess I could I could get a bassist. I'll That'd play those same same notes on bass guitar <laughs> and make it look even more just cohesive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of solid. Well, we all appreciate you guys being here. Um, if it wasn't for all those little bits and pieces, we wouldn't have this Friday. So thank you guys for just randomly meeting up. Um, independently, do you guys have any like music you guys are working on outside of Koshin? 
Uh, Nick, Nick, you want to take this one? <laughs> yeah, I'll take this one. Um, I am in a band uh, entitled Nick Cousier and the Disciples, um, which I lovely singer Kate, <laughs> Casey, <laughs> Katie, um, uh, plays rhythm guitar in that band, which is lovely. Um, I've been making music for a couple years. I originally made music in high school under the name of Chef, S-H-E-F-F. Um, nice. <laughs> never played a single show, but it was it was really fun, and I was like, I I wanna I wanna keep going with this. I wanna, but maybe more just like on my own time, which is why the the band's named after myself. Um, but obviously, I can't play everything that I do on Ableton in like in like live. So yeah, that's how the disciples. Um, being blessed with the disciples, they help me out live, which is very fun. They're all amazing musicians. Um. And yeah, I've released like two songs. I got three more that are on the way. Nice. And uh, yeah, it's really fun. I have a show the week after Greenfest, which is funsies. Totally. Mm. And yeah. Um, I'm also in another band called Cherry Knot, which is an all-girl band here at State. And that's fun because, you know, like with Koshin, it's like I write all the songs and these boys help me bring that song vision to life. But with Cherry Knot, you know, it's actually like, they'll write songs and then we'll all collectively make it to life and sometimes like i'll be able to write my own music if you know i think it's not kosher enough if i think it's a little bit more silly or low-key whatever i'll give them to cherry knot but yeah i mean i always uh <laughs> pass them I, off to cherry knot <laughs> <laughs> i know um but yeah so i just i always will write music on the side and it's just kind of like up to whatever the vibes are if i'm like hey wrote this song sometimes it's like super not for live and band so i won't even like be like here take this but like sometimes i'll be like you know what? i think this would be a cool cushion song or a cool cherry knot song and yeah d- divvy it up yeah i respect it honestly um so with this upcoming event being focused on sustainability would you guys say you're all like environmentally like aware of what's going on well i'm actually an environmental science major so (laughs) it's like it's really cool for me to be performing specifically for green fest yes it's like it's awesome right like it's exactly what i would like to be doing is helping promote sustainability through whatever way i can and, and the fact that i get to play music which is one of my favorite things to do yeah and have that also affect the field of sustainability is just nice ideal it's awesome that is ideal. Yeah. one time uh and by one time like two weeks ago maybe three weeks ago isaiah like was giving me this like talk about why i should like recycle and i was like i was like maybe not as uh, attentively as i should have been and then i was like hold so on never like you know this is kind of facts and I, I said I was going to record a video of when I like, made my first trip to the cycle, but I actually took a video of it on my phone. Yo, all right. I'll, hey, show, I'll, I'll be waiting for that video. I'll, I'll be waiting. waiting. I'll show you right now. <laughs> You're going to be waiting a long time. No, I'm not <laughs> already, I promise. <laughs> Zen's on it. Bro, There's we're going to actually footage. have half of our set be Isaiah like, lecturing the people in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Hey, let's go. <laughs> that one was full, so everything. we'll be on the empty one. <laughs> See? I'm a man of my word. He's a man of his word. He recycles now. Everybody guys. knows. Thanks, Thanks says man. a man of his word. We just got to get uh, you a hydro flask, brother. He didn't yeah. actually show us a video. There's the blank screen. <laughs> <laughs> Zen still does not recycle. Damn. <laughs> this is untrue. <laughs> is he? Um, would you say that, like, you're? Are you an environmental science major? Like? I'm a sustainability major, actually, and I have a I have a minor in English with like an editing and publishing emphasis. Oh, nice. Yeah. And that that kind of like background you have is that what led you to become the chair of green fest like how it did is. that like start for you yeah i started college as an english major that was kind of my 17 year old i don't know what i'm doing with my life decision although it has been really good to have yeah um and great for soft skills but um yeah i made the switch to sustainability because as an english major i think what happened is i didn't have to take chemistry so i took oceanography instead Smart. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, this is really interesting. And then I ended up taking one more kind of base level sustainability or environmental science class yeah. and found out I really liked it from there and then made it my minor and then proceeded to complete that minor really, really quickly because yeah. it was only 15 units. I was done with it after a year or so yeah. and then got kind of sad because I was like, oh, I'm, I'm done with all my environmental science classes. That sucks. And yeah. then from there, I was like, well, if I'm saying that, I should probably make it my major so 
um, switched it to my major, and then from there I've just been doing internships, and then I found out about the chair position opening and applied to that because I've been to Greenfest events in the past and thought they were really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've also been on a board in the past and been the president of it for a couple of years, so I felt like that was familiar to me. Yeah. So, yeah, and then I got the position, and it's been really fun. It's yeah. been a great experience. Where do you intend to take, like, your major? Like, where do you want to end up being, like, uh, focus on sustainability. Yeah, I'm graduating in May and I want to go into the sustainability environmental science field mm-hmm. after this. Yeah. I'm trying to be open minded with the type of position since it's a very broad field and there's a lot you can do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm looking at sustainability coordinator, sustainability specialist kinds of positions, and yeah. environmental planning is another avenue that I would do. So, awesome. Pretty open minded at the moment, but yeah. Oh, awesome. What about you, Isaiah, with your... Um, yeah, so, I mean, I'm actually just taking a course this semester um, that has really inspired me um, in the, like, food sustainability sector. Yeah. So it's a, it's called Cal 400. Um, I honestly recommend this course to, like, anybody who's any... I think you can take... I think there's no prereqs for this course. I think you can take it as any pretty much any major. Um, and that might be wrong, but I, I think we have, like, some poli-sci majors. We have, like, we have... A, a decent spread um and it's just like it's showing so many different directions you can go as far as like making an impact right here right now in your community i feel like a lot of the times we get bogged down in like conversations about sustainability and environmental science about like the whole grand scope of things and yeah. how like kind of screwed we are in a lot of ways yeah. and how like oh it's all like the companies and there's nothing we can do about yeah, that because there's so much try. money yeah, yeah it's like well, no, there's like there's local initiatives and a lot of them are really like honestly under promoted right now. And so this class has been showing me some more of the local initiatives around here. Like there's a there's a um, there's a um, mobile farmers market in the Lemon Grove area that is it's uh, it's run by this this organization called uh, Project New Village. Yeah. And they take the, the truck with all fresh locally grown produce to different underserved neighborhoods that don't necessarily have as access to as good produce. Um, and they set up the truck and you can go buy it. And if you fill out a survey, they'll give you a $10 credit, which is like a, that's like a decent amount for groceries. Like that can probably get you like two or three days worth of, you know, fruits and vegetables. Yeah. And like, if you just keep going, like that's, that's yeah. awesome. Right. That's like a really Absolutely. sustainable thing that yeah. also helps a lot of other sort of like, um, just communities and yeah community like yeah community areas exactly so that's yeah. just been really inspiring for me and i think i want to like look more into that and yeah kind of go the community and community promotion route with my environmental science awesome i respect them and well, best of luck to you in both of you guys' fields um i think it's very relevant to this week and like everything that's going on in our world um i have to ask like continuing about green fest what would you say is like the most difficult obstacle this is like a general question in making everything happen whether it be scheduling, um, band performances, events this week, like what would you say has been the most challenging thing? Probably, oh, sorry. no, go ahead. <clears throat> um, probably just re- like rehearsing and stuff has, has been yeah. weird because we've been rehearsing for like Green Fest, like what, like like hardcore for like what, a month now, two months? Something like that, yeah. For, like pretty much like since, mm-hmm. since, uh, since Battle of the Bands, we've been like yeah. really mm-hmm. pushing it into high gear, like making, admit, like making content to like really yeah. trying to promote the band, yeah. promote mm-hmm. the show. Well, because like we when we won Green Fest, and you know this is a very like awesome opportunity that we're so grateful for, because you know we get to open for Denzel Curry on this amazing stage, and it's also just a plus that it's for like a really good um, cause. You know, yeah, really good cause, and so when we won, I was like a good like pat in the back of like okay we're doing something right let's use this momentum and not stop it because we're about to do this performance so yeah like nick said we were making content and then we i was like guys this is the time we need to release music because it's been a while yeah and so you know news is we are dropping our first ep out of like the album that will come later nice. on the green fest on Ooh. that night yeah get hyped so not Leaks. only are we practicing but like for the first like month of like when school started we were like we need to finish this first and then we can go into practice mode so it's just kind of like setting ourselves up for success Mm -hmm. you know because 
you don't know how Friday's gonna go, but at the very least, I want to say that I and we have done all that we have could, can and can do to set ourselves up for success. Okay. And Friday's gonna be lit. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have fun no matter what. It's, it's about the friends you make on the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think I would say my obstacle would be just sorting out people's accounts on Ticketmaster. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, what are we at Master. right now? Oh <laughs> my goodness. Well, okay, so <laughs> what happens is that <laughs> people's individual accounts, it sometimes doesn't transfer over their account from a fall student to a spring student. Wow. So if it didn't make that transfer, yeah. sometimes the ticket link isn't working or it'll just say like no event found or yeah. something. And then I'm having people going, Ticketmaster's broken, Ticketmaster's broken. And we've just had to uh, make sure that we're communicating what email to reach out to to fix people's accounts and transfer their accounts over to a Spring account. So if you're listening and you're having issues, look on the GreenFest Instagram under the ticket info highlight. And there'll be an email that you can reach out to and just say, hey, I'm trying to get my GreenFest ticket. My Ticketmaster account isn't working can you fix this issue for me? Yeah. They'll get an automated response at first, but then they'll reach out to you individually. And once they've been doing that, it's been working for people. Um, and some people are saying that trying the link on our Instagram has been working better than trying it on the email. So we've just been yeah. figuring out all the kinks of it and making sure that as many people as possible can get their ticket. Yeah. But yeah. People have been like, Oh my god, it's like sold out. And I'm like, like no, it's not. Yet. It's I'm it's trying so hard not to stress at all cuz it's one of the very few things that's not at all in my control. Yeah, no, yeah. it's not in any like we can just spread the word of the good lord, but like Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what we can do and what we can control is reach out to people, tell them what to do if they're having trouble, which I said earlier, and that's all we can worry about. So, we're trying our best to get that message across. We've been posting We've been having AS posts, Aztec Student Union posts. Um, so, yeah. And we've been telling people at events as well. Okay. Awesome. Um, while this is a question, question um, how has the background that each of you have had within music impacted how you guys, like, have interacted? Like, whether that be in a positive or negative, I'm asking for both. Um, like intrinsically like Co katie i know you have like a more traditional music background correct mm -hmm. um and then like just basically like how have you guys like interacted as a unit based upon your individual like, backgrounds it's a good question, a good question. i feel like uh, I, i'm gonna like speak because i feel like i can see it very objectively but mm -hmm. it goes to personality first and foremost too mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you guys can go in depth more into your personality, but here's how I saw it when we all kind of came together for the first time. You had Nick, who, you know, has been this great drummer for a long time, but he's, you know, marching band background. Ooh, so you have to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't even know that. We'll get to me too. Yeah. Arlington High School and San Diego State, actually. Whoa. I didn't even know that. So he has somewhat of a technical background, and he has this, like, he likes rock and all this, like, you know, just loud noise, noise. And I think my favorite part is I'm like, Nick, you know, there noise can be, boy. like, silence at some parts where, like, there's not drumming. <laughs> but just, like, stop playing for, like, God for a second, please. <laughs> yeah. So there's that, which I'm like, you know, you could do maybe the kick drum, but, like, <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that, that comes into play. And then... Isaiah, you have like more of that rock, like you know, you Alice in Chains kind of background. Eighties metal stuff, yep. yeah. Yeah, which, which I kind of like because I feel like in, not to get too technical with music, but I think guitar soloists especially kind of have this like pentatonics, like they do the same kind of like solo every time, where it's just walking up this like the guitar scale, right? But I feel like with somehow with Isaiah and his background, he kind of actually adds more melodic lines into his solos so it's like something that you could actually even repeat with your voice if you wanted to which i really like and appreciate which i think is really cool about his background um zen yeah <laughs> i mean I can, background I can, I, can, I, can go, I can go a little more into my background as far as like why that oh, yeah, is yeah, like yeah, I, so I, I mean I'm, i grew up in a very musical family so all of my pretty much all my family either plays an instrument or sings or both um and so I grew up a lot around just all different kinds of music. 
Um, and I actually didn't start on guitar. I started on the clarinet at third grade, Ooh, okay. uh, Squidward style. So <laughs> develop my sense of melody, Make. and especially like for solos and stuff like that, because clarinet is like a one note at a time yeah. instrument. You kind of can't like. You can kind of shred on it, but it, it it's not quite the same. So like coming up with melodies, shred is on just, the, yeah, you shred know on what I'm the saying. Clarinet. You can just like. You can just, like <laughs> Like, like a guitar where you can kind of do the same pattern again and again and it sounds good. Um, so that's that's kind of how I approach solos, or at least how I how I try to approach as many solos as I can. Because I mean, melodies, melodies, the thing that get, keep gets people coming back. You know, like you look mm -hmm. at Thanks. you look at all the greatest solos that people remember in pop music, and most of them people can sing. So it's yeah. important to me that you can at least sing like. A good part of my solo yeah yeah um, and i'm yeah. sorry uh, i was gonna go into a little uh background about mine i mean i've been playing in bands like throughout high school for a little bit here and there i was in one for like a, two years in high school and then i came here i was looking for a band because you know just being on stage was like the most fun thing that like i could be doing in my opinion just you know playing an instrument jamming out and uh yeah even though i don't really have a traditional or classical i mean i took lessons with a guitar teacher for a couple of years in high school who you know i probably credit with a lot of my uh playing ability and technique and stuff like that but um, kind of just trying to go with my ear, going with what I think sounds good and kind of what, you know, inspires certain films within me is kind of what I've gotten by on with, uh, you know, my music, career, my music career so far. And, uh, you know, I know that because of that, you know, music's going to be a part of my life for a while. So that's yeah. just my, back, my background. Yeah. Oh. And, oh. Just kidding. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was, was going to elaborate on, like, the, the marching band yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> it is, like, a, it isn't exactly the thing I'd like to mention on, like, a first date or something like that. But <laughs> wow. it is it is definitely, it has helped me tremendously with, like, drumming and keeping time and, and everything like that. It's, like, it's probably, like, the greatest asset I think I've ever had in terms of music. Um, is, and, like, like, you learn all the basics and you just get them drilled into you for years and years mm. and years. And, and having to, like, you know, move around while you're also playing them, like, it makes, like, playing the drum set even, like, easier. Well, not, it's not really that easy, but, like, it, it makes it all, like, more cohesive and you're just, like, this huge unit of, of drum. <laughs> and it's really... Absolute unit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 absolute yeah. unit. Like, um... And yeah, that was cool. Um, I also like jazz. Jazz yeah. drums are really, really fun. I'm like a jazz fan. <laughs> um, I do like jazz. Very deep. And definitely, I'd say like playing, like recently, like for my own band, as after mentioned, like I, I learned how to play bass and guitar. I won't say I know how to play them well, um, but definitely like learning those instruments has helped me like really kind of more understand how like someone who plays that instrument would think. Um, or the absence of thought for a bass player. <laughs> so <laughs> true, true, bro, oh, true. No. Um, but yeah, if you want to get good at drums, from across the band, couch. Yeah, that's my takeaway. And I will say the best part <laughs> about all of it is like I know like n you know Nick, you, you sing in your band, and I say I know you like to sing too. But what's great is because I come like you know I took vocal lessons as a kid because I was doing. I have my own marching band. I, I did musical theater, and um, so I was trained in that way. So it's great because, you know, I, I sing these melodies, and no one really has notes for my voice, so I'd love that. <laughs> yeah. It's nice that no one else really knows how to drum. <laughs> yeah. So you guys each fit into your, like, respective pockets. Like, it just meshes really well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like that. I like that Can a lot. I ask a question? Go ahead, go ahead. Um, you, you, maybe you can repeat it just for the video. Okay. Is there a specific like artist or song yeah. that like, got you passionate about music? Because mm -hmm. I know you probably got into family stuff like, kind of the same way. But there's like, like, what was the biggest influence for you wanting to go on stage and get in the band and everything like that? Easy. Just for audio uh, sake. Corn, Woodstock 99. <laughs> <laughs> not kidding. And, uh, <laughs> oof. What, what are some legendary other shows I just Little made me think? Biscuit, Woodstock 99. Anything Woodstock 99 was just like, yeah. I mean, I remember back we played a show uh, in like February of last year or something like that. And it was like the, one of the most popping, like, I guess, backyard shows we had. It just first time I really got an audience like moshing and going like crazy. Kind of what I used to see like in these YouTube videos that I'd watch of these old concerts. Which show was that? 
uh, the probably the Hannah Geller Koshin one that we did. Oh yeah, the, that was the one that, banger. Yeah, that one was like. I mean, there's still footage from that that we never even did. Like that, I still have to. I haven't even gotten yet. But like, it's there's. That was the first time that like it was just like people like losing their minds, going ape shit at one of our shows, and I was like, yeah, this is like, this is like what it's all about for me. Like this is awesome, and like just seeing those videos. So like yeah, corn. I'm trying to think of other artists. I'm sure I'll blurt it out when it comes to my mind, but someone else can take it. Um. Biggest musical Katie, inspiration. you got something or I can go next? Great you question, go. John. All right, for me, uh, as far as getting on stage, um, again, I pretty much have been on stage since I picked up music. Um, you know, I, pl yeah. I played in band too, like I was, and, and, and actually funny enough, I would say something that definitely got me interested in like, sort of a more like a smaller ensemble. I did, I did a little bit of jazz, band when I was younger um, and had a fun time doing the solos with that and when it when it finally came time to pick up guitar um, it was kind of weird that I know it's, it's like weird to me that I didn't pick it up beforehand but I picked it up my my senior year of high school um, and it was just like I wrote a song and I had no way to accompany myself and so I was like well I now I have to learn another instrument I have to learn guitar so I, I picked guitar and then uh, I would say the first band that really inspired me to like get like pretty technically proficient was Van Halen. Ooh, listening to Van Halen. Rest in peace, Eddie. My, uh, yeah, that was definitely like, the, okay, I want to be able to like, I'm still not at, <laughs> I'm nowhere near Van Halen right now, but um, we'll get there one day. That's yeah. a good answer. Um, yeah. I feel like I, you know, started with this like performing on stage literally when I was eight, just doing like musical theater as a kid fun hobby and then i i don't know if y'all know this but i um i was really passionate about musical theater and i actually like went professional was homeschooled for a bit because i was doing paid theater gigs performing which wow. was crazy um i quit because gay people are mean to me um i'm gay <laughs> i can say that but like as a 12 year old man it's dude, a pass it's a pass, it's a pass dude 12, 12 year old katie going through puberty and then having like you know very like sassy gay men around like i would cry like every day after the performance <laughs> it's not good um so i quit but Insane quote. <laughs> <laughs> make sure that's in the thumbnail <laughs> people are mean to me um, so, um, uh, so I got my bread up, but so I've been, for, I've been performing for like more, and this is so privileged for me to say, I've performed way, way more times than I've seen performances. And Same. wow. Same here, actually. Same. Yeah. So I, you know, don't, I, I see a lot of music now in my life, but I didn't really grow up going to shows. And in high school, I, I was my own self act. I was like doing my own music, doing the acoustic girl route. And then I started a band in high school and then I'm here. And, you know, I, I don't really, like, seek inspiration from, like, performers except, like, when I, you know, we have this inspiration for Koshin, Destroy Boys, which is, like, a band. And I saw them, a punk band, uh, female-fronted, and I saw them live in L.A. And I was, like, absolutely blown away because of the positive energy and, you know, the, like, just the energy. And same with Pierce the Veil. Mm, They're crazy yeah. live. They're they're for 40 year old men they are jumping up on stage like throwing their guitars like across the stage and i was like you know seeing that obviously i'm gonna perform again perform way more times than i see it but i was just like it was a good re-up because you know i was like yeah you have to be captivating it's like be on the audience side to really understand like what is so thrilling to yeah. see so that was that and that was recent too. Did you work the Did you work the Pierce the Veil Destroy Boy show or no? I forgot. No, I saw it. Oh yeah, no, because they they just came actually to Viejas at because they're both San Diego bands and uh, I actually met the you know I, they know this I met the lead singer of Destroy Boys backstage and I was like pushing some of the equipment back to the truck and I just said it up to her say yo like I'm in a band we really love you guys we do some of your stuff and she thought it was really cool so like yeah hey. and we got the little we got to see like Pierce the Veil as they were coming off and they were just going crazy on stage and it definitely was like added inspiration so yeah, um, yeah that, that was sick zen mm. was so sweet he gave me a pick from destroy boys that i have not used but i'm going to use on friday as well wow. good luck mm. momentum there you so go thank you. That's, really sweet. that's awesome i think uh i think for Aww. me i mean like my so my family is like not musical at all at least my parents aren't like mm. not a musical bone in their body loving to death but <laughs> music's just not their thing um and they know that too but uh, my brother and my sister are crazy into music. They both have a degree in music. Um, both did DCI, which is like basically professional marching band. 
um you know like they toured around the country doing that uh my sister still like plays in orchestras my brother plays in the arapaho uh symphony in in denver um Mm -hmm. like both very very successful music people they can both talk your ear off about music theory and stuff like that um so but growing up i really didn't like listen to music and i still kind of don't which is strange but um but i'd say like the thing that really got me into drums was sing 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 by benny goodman um it's got just this it starts off with like, this cool drum intro is just like doof, doof, goof, goof, doof, oh, goof, yeah. goof, goof. and like that's sort of what i like use as like song. inspiration when i'm when i'm uh mm-hmm. playing just a girl by Koshin. Yep, because as, as a similar similar drum intro to like a different rhythm and beat and tempo please don't sue us <laughs> what I can't say that nice to know like if the person whoever Benny has the rights to the Betty Goodman song it's probably copyright expired it's probably been 50 years <laughs> Benny Goodman is <laughs> the estates like the estates are going crazy yeah uh, yeah whatever um, Nick Hooser loves Benny Goodman um, <laughs> but yeah like stuff like that I uh, I really really liked and then when I, first, when I started getting into rock uh, it took a while because like like I know like Isaiah and Zen like you guys have been watching rock bands for like like ever I my f- very first rock show was in my like my freshman year of college like I just never saw one growing up in Poughkeepsie New York what show was it um it was admittedly a pretty damn good show it was uh Hella Mega Tour so it was oh yeah, yeah, yeah I saw Boy that in New Day. York yeah um, oh, wow. we had nosebleed tickets but it was it was, was a banger of a show in New York and I was like okay like this is pretty cool. Um, but I think we're really starting to get me into them. I'm not sure when I started listening to them, but The Hives. Um, it's like a Swedish rock group. They're not terribly well-known, although they just dropped, I think, one of the best albums I've heard in a very, very long time. Um, their main singer, uh, his name's like Howlin' Hell something. It's really hard to pronounce. Um, but just like the type of stuff they do on stage is just so cool. They're just so like, like egotistical and like <laughs> i see and, like, i see where it comes from now <laughs> <laughs> no but it's like it's like cool and it's like charming and it's like so and it's just like like the the lead singer just has like this like control over the audience like he can just like be the most like outrageous like delusional guy in the world and everyone's like yeah i love this band like it's so cool yeah um not saying i'm delusional and narcissistic of course but i think it's like that that was like okay like doing stuff like this is is really really cool yeah um and yeah like I, I didn't start playing in rock bands until my freshman year of college which is weird but same, yeah. same here so yeah. moral of the story we are them actually. yeah, yeah. We are them. <laughs> is he any um like favorite artists or any sort of yeah just same question but for you Favorite artist? Yeah, favorite Denzel artist. Curry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have actually Ocean. been listening to a lot of Denzel Curry recently, just so Fire. that I pregame. Like, yeah, I know my lyrics. Yeah, the reward. Um, uh, I listen to a lot of hip hop variety of artists. I would say, yeah. like, um, I don't know, Kendrick Lamar, Twenty One Savage, Travis, uh, like a lot, honestly. But yeah. Um, yeah, recently Denzel Curry, but <laughs> like yeah. this year, um, there's. I feel like there's so many names though that it's hard to yeah. name too many on the spot. But I like rock as well, like '80s, '70s, yeah. even a bit of '90s rock. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have like a favorite concert you've been to, like any genre? That's hard. That's hard. Um, the most recent concert I went to was Suicide Boys. Oh, it was Grade that's a. so fun! Um, I actually yeah. saw. I've seen Grade A uh, in 2018, and Denzel was opening. That was the first time I saw really? him. Really? Wow! And that was one of the most memorable jokes is there were so many other also performers that must be such a full circle moment that you've seen no for real yeah because we in that great day it wasn't this past one it was the one before that Mm -hmm. Um, there was also Snot and Mm -hmm. Ski Mask was there too it was the best lineup and they Um, all just brought so much (laughs) hype so much energy where was this it was in oh god I don't even remember um, the name of the amphitheater but it's like 30 oh, minutes oh, Chula. The Chula Vista one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Chula, yeah, that's <clears throat> yeah, it was there. Um, and yeah, it was it was so fun. Because we were there for Suicide Boys, but then we were like, oh, Ski Mask and Snot too are going to yeah. be there. And there were two or three others even before that. So like it was a really up. cool concert. We were there for a long time. It was so mm-hmm. worth it. Yeah. If you, got, if you had an ideal artist to see, um, just off top of head, who would you guys want? want to go and see like living or dead or just living now like any criteria yeah like living or dead um yeah we'll start. anybody can jump on this one yeah 
I'll do one living, one dead, maybe. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't think it's um, dead, probably like Hendrix or something. I don't even know. Nice. That. There's so many like Jerry Garcia. There's so many people that you could choose. Even like more like modern people too. Like I was supposed to see like Lil Peep because like he like when he went to my high school and stuff and like literally like a month or two before he died I was supposed to see him on like Halloween. Yeah. And like we're like oh I'll just catch him next time he's around and then like you know he died like soon after and it was just like tragic. Wow. So you know, Peep's up there. Thankfully, I saw Juice World like uh, yeah. Rolling Loud in New York. That was sick. But uh, any artist, I mean, any artist that just brings the energy for me, mm-hmm. like you know, just makes the show like an unforgettable experience. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't even know. Like I've seen like this band Turnstile, but they're been pretty big now. Like probably like five or six times. But, like I'd always like see them again. I'd never pass up an opportunity to see them. So yeah. anything that brings the energy, really. Okay. Anybody else? Um, I'll also do one living, one dead. I'll do. Probably the hives for me. Like like they they come to San Diego. Same thing with the strokes actually. I love the strokes. Everyone loves the strokes. <laughs> but um whenever like somehow whatever gods make their tour schedules, the the live nation gods, they always put uh the SoCal shows when I'm when it's like the summertime and I'm back in New York and they always put the New York shows in any other time of the year when I'm back in San Diego. So I'm always across the country whenever they're doing a show, which is frustrating. Yeah. Um, and as for one dead, that's a hard question, bro. Like, um, Jimmy Dorsey and Al Bully, they're both big band swing guys, and mm-hmm. like Tchaikovsky, I guess. If I want to sound posh, <laughs> I mean, you can you want to see like Tchaikovsky himself? Yeah, I feel mm-hmm. like he would be cool. I've heard, I've heard yeah, some same. live Tchaikovsky, Sorry. but out of living musicians today, of course. Um, for me, performing his own pieces. Yeah, no. He, I mean, like, <laughs> what do you that's, that's why I was like, you want to see like him? <laughs> He's piano. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Bro, I want to see Beethoven, bro. Let's. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're saying, you you're saying Beethoven came again. Okay. Uh, for me, I'm gonna for for dead. I think. I mean, some of the members are still alive, but I'm gonna have to go with Lane. Van Halen again. Oh. Mm. Just they're gonna say I, Lane. Nah, I. I mean, yeah, that'd be crazy too. I, I would low-key change my answer. Staley. I think I would change my answer to like Van Halen, either Van Halen or maybe Nirvana. Mm. Uh, for how Nirvana would be cool how too, but it's definitely I gotta stick with my with my guys in Van Halen yeah. um, and like David Lee Roth with like an actual voice because he doesn't have one anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, like that. <laughs> that's for sure. Like that. And then alive. It's like between two, and Zen already mentioned one turnstile. Yeah. This this dude kind of got me into turnstile now, and Let's I'm go. like, I really want to go see a show. <laughs> Um, like and then the other one is YouTube. Oh yeah, wait, I dragged Nick to a turn style show. I YouTube love, the Sphere? I YouTube, yeah. Why are you, you and, like, I know I just did yeah, the thing in the, in the Sphere, and I didn't go to that, but that looked insane, and I just, I'd like to see Oh, in the Vegas point. Sphere? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That looked so cool. Yeah. Weren't they the first ones to perform in yeah, it? Yeah, that's sick. So, that was crazy. Yeah, I'm a big, big, big YouTube fan. I was actually supposed to see Juice World, uh, R.I.P. Yeah, um, yeah. Another dead one that i would have loved to see was mac miller oh because yeah. i listened to him for a while like before he passed so that would have been really really cool um i would also just have killed to see like again like 80s rock bands like or i would have loved to see like zeppelin for oh, example zeppelin yeah, I was gonna yeah. Like, yeah. yeah yeah or in terms of like modern artists i've heard tyler the creator is a really good performer oh, I've seen him. That yeah i was gonna fun. say i didn't see him again yeah when did you see him did, was it rolling loud or no no it was uh, for his flower boy album but he did a lot of the old like um old stuff like i love the song fucking young my favorite song yeah, I've heard he's a really good performer, so yeah, hopefully one day I'll get to see Tyler. I feel like J. Cole would be really cool, yeah. too. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, uh, for my living or dead, Michael Jackson. Oh! oh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Everyone just changed yeah. their answer. <laughs> yeah, Michael Jackson is top of my list for sure. Um, Bob Marley. Like, yeah. like, those are, like, the greatest uh, in their respective fields. 100%. Um, 100%. I've seen Kendrick. I'd probably want to see him again. Um, and then, damn, I saw Chris Stapleton on my uh, like on my birthday, and I'll definitely see him again. He's actually a great performer. Like oh, he yeah. sounds exactly. Oh, he's got a killer voice. Yeah, his his voice is insane. Um, yeah, I, I like all your guys' answers. Juice World, that's that's a tragic. One. I was so sad yeah. <laughs> when I saw him. I didn't, I didn't realize how like important it was at the time because it was just like it was the first time Rolling Loud went to New York and I was still in high school and I was like, yo, this is lit, like yo, he's right there. And then like 
uh, he died maybe like a year after or something like that. And like I wasn't even like that big of a fan. Just like now looking back, I was like, damn, I'm like lucky to have seen that. You know, yeah, it was, it was you know really important. Yeah. Also, Skrillex. Skrillex. Whoa. I've seen Skrillex. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. About yeah. Are okay. you guys into EDM? Yeah. No. Uh, no. <laughs> I can I can get behind a little. Yeah, I can get behind some. Yeah. Unless I'm Depends. drunk on a boat, yeah. you know. If it's like That's really hard and aggressive techno, like if I, if I can like bang my head to it, like dude, it's giving scared, like yeah. sunny beach day drink. That's what I think. That, of EDM. That's like that's like uh, I've dabbled in raves a little bit. Yeah, yeah like, like that harder yeah, stuff. I really like because like, like, it's, yeah. like, it's kind of shares some of that like intense energy. Or like for gym playlists, I will say hard style is really good for going to gym. No, what what boat people are you are listening to EDM? It's just like house hot girls in bikinis. House gets a little old sometimes for me. He's like, yeah, I'm not on you. Those boats <laughs> but i saw i saw elenium in vegas and that was really really fun i saw him at opium which is the oh, club in caesar's boats. palace yeah. Yeah. Exactly. that was sick it was really good cool. I, um disco lines is coming somewhere close to san diego state oh really and there's having yeah similar to how like we're having like opening for denzel they have uh, a couple of student djs opening for him he's kind of doing like a college Wait, really? tour yeah, like oh, uh, cool. one of the guys who played Shepard, who's from uh, D-Sig, when he played at uh, oh, yeah, the House yeah. of Blues shows, yeah, he, he's one of the DJs oh, opening. Oh, really? So it's pretty cool. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. is cool. This month is going to be crazy because there's Denzel Curry, and then later in the month I'm going to Beyond Wonderland. So oh, that's wow. Sick. It's, uh, yeah, this month is full of music. Yeah. Music month. Music, music March. <laughs> music March. I like that. Yeah. Um, this is just kind of like some fun questions route. Um, I feel like we got the more deeper kind of introspective ones. Um if you woke up after being put in like cryogenic sleep um after 100 years what would your first like act be or like what would your first question be did the like, like is it, am i like living in fallout right now i think oh. of like fallout 4 type shit like am i like did the bombs drop or like is there going to be like a cap that mutated into like a lion outside that's gonna kill me like how do I survive like what ha- what's the state true, of society right true, now yeah. what's the state yeah. of society I would probably just ask what year it was <laughs> exactly. I'm, probably, I'm going to, the video games prepared me for this I guess I don't know yeah. they took my child wait a second um <laughs> respect for knowing that um, see if the McRib came back that's more. the McRib <laughs> 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 you like that question he's like yes <laughs> I'll be I'll wait till the day I die for the McRib, for the McRib. <laughs> Yeah, walk to the end of the earth for the big room. Yeah. Um, probably I don't know. I like to see because his are on music. I'm curious to see like what kind of oh yeah music. I feel like it'd just be like noise core, yeah. some some <laughs> like sex twins. No, no, some, it's some like all AI. music. <laughs> like it, cause yeah, like it, I'd be, like, do, do real just, like, people still make music like now? Oh you know? wow, because like, like it's like a hundred years ago. You know, it's like. Like, well, like that was like 1920s. That's like all like big band swing. Yeah. Well, Jim Morrison so predicted like ragtime. Jim Morrison predicted like EDM and Dawes. How he said like in the 60s that in the future music's gonna be maybe like one person on a computer and like any type of genre pretty much. Well, yeah. that's because the technology was pretty much like getting there from like analog to digital. That's yeah. when like MIDI was. I think MIDI was invented in the 70s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have any guilty pleasures? Um, like whether it be TVs, movies, Survivor. Um, Wow. Survivor is my life. Like I've so seen good. nearly every season of Survivor. Uh, wait, okay, yeah, I, me and my girlfriend just finished season 42. <laughs> yeah, that's a sep- like that's a whole piece. separate podcast right there, <laughs> talking about yeah. Survivor. Oh, shout, out, shout out Mike Short. I was literally <laughs> yes. thinking that before she said it. Dude, we, we work with a guy who used to be like a camera guy for Survivor. Ooh. No way. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. Shout, oh, yeah, sure. shout out yeah. Shot, yeah, me, Actually, me, Katie, and Jesse, we all work together at the VA House Arena setting up for like the concerts that come through. It's a yeah. pretty lit gig, making some cool memories while getting paid. Did you get called for Green Fest? No. I, I just saw Kevin yesterday while I was at I work at Did you press him? Nah, he was like, um, he left before I could talk to him. I had to like go deal with like, um, I'm not working Green Fest, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Um, you wanna yeah. enjoy it. Huh? You wanna exactly. Enjoy I want to enjoy yeah, it. Fair. It's like, I don't want to go and then I like, have to go be like in the morning and then come back. No, I would want to like load in my own amp and get paid for it. That'd be cool. Yo. Did they didn't call you? No, they didn't. But no, like, they didn't call me either. That'd be cool, though. Yeah. Ain't no one helping us, though. It's just going to be me and my 5-1 ass just like, please. Like, Guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure. I have one Arson. that I don't, I don't watch it anymore, but I remember there was one summer where I watched like What's every single season of like Ink Master I could possibly Ink get my hands <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, what do you, where's your tattoo? I don't yeah, have yeah, tattoos, but that show had like a lock on me. I was like, 
I was feasting. I was like, oh, these tattoos are so cool. Like, yeah. I, was just, I was honestly just like super like entranced by the artistry. And then like also like the idea that like <laughs> if, you, if you fuck up, it's like fucked up for like a good amount of time. And then like, yeah. you know, how, like sometimes you have people come back it's with like, like beef, like my tattoo sucks. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, I, was, I was like, damn, how are they going to fix this one? Like, Wait, you know what I'm saying? I have Apparently a question. Get it out of this yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh sure. the headphones you just knocked over the, no. uh, the headphone the Audio's out. But yeah, that uh, I haven't watched in a long time. But yeah, that was Yo, that John, was definitely a guilty pleasure. I can't the even. amount of Ink Master I watched I, was pretty crazy. I actually have a question for all of you guys. Wait, wait. Is this on or is sound still going through the headphones or no? Yeah, I can't hear anything in the headphones. Well, it's just the. Oh, there we go. Right, hello, hello, good. testing, testing. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm okay, good. This is the here. Wait, I got, I got one. What you got? Pleasure. What is it? Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys know this, um, but back in high school. For whatever reason, I would eat like entire loaves of white bread. That's like, all. Un- what is wrong with that? <laughs> un- Are you un- <laughs> untoasted? Nothing on it, straight out the bag. No just, butter. Like, it really it shines. Bro, in your were you like, were you like at least Low like rolling key. it up or like doing something? No, you, you were just would like say slices, bro. <laughs> just like like the most basic possible like Wonder Bread type stuff. It is like heavenly. Some something to about this it day? has. So I've slowed down. <laughs> <laughs> it still has a hold on me. Oh my I god! Sometimes I wake great. up in the middle of the night, just oh, where's my white bread? Bro, um, what is it? Bro? I've had my moments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to admit they've eaten a whole loaf of white bread. Yeah, I don't want to admit this, but Isaiah did put me onto spooning uh, jars of peanut butter recently too. Oh, he put yeah. me onto recycling in that. Dang. Um, those, like, warheads, I, I eat entire bags of those. Bro. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, you, Nick my, my has, like, a hey, he's kind of, like, a child. He's a masochist. What is wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> he, like, gave up, like, candy That's for cool. Lent, and he's like, candy bro, like, soda. he's like, bro, like, he's like, bro, like, I'm really struggling and suffering. I'm like, boy, you are 21. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough, because, like, usually, like, you know, like, if I'm, like, walking through the unit, I'm just like, oh, I'll go get some, like, some Mike and Nikes or something like that. And now I can't because it's Lent. And I'm just like, oh, gotta go eat my white bread now. <laughs> 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 gotta go eat my white bread and water. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I mean, recently, like, honestly, because, like, I've just been so busy with school and, like, I haven't had a whole lot of time to go out to the store and I just see loaves of white bread sitting in my fridge. I'm just like, Mm-mm-mm. do I? Mm. Oh, that's a, actually, that brings up a whole I, other. I mustn't. You know? That brings but up a whole other thing. Are y'all bread in the fridge or out the fridge oh, type in the people? Fridge. In, in the, the fridge. fridge. I don't eat bread like that. I gotta have my bread up. Yeah, no, yeah you, I don't, you don't I, got no bread. You know, my family has never been an in the fridge, so I don't. But yes, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't put mine. But I don't. I'm not hating. I'm not trying to hate. I just in the fridge. I'm gonna hate. That. That's weird. What? Yeah. <laughs> the, they don't even put it in the fridge in the store. In the fridge? What? They don't even have it in the store. Like. In the they refrigeration. Don't know what no, exactly. I, I know other people a lot of stuff refrigerate after fridge. opening. I don't think bread's refrigerated after opening. So then, why is it weird? It's not refrigerated mm-hmm. after opening. I'm saying, like, when you get a bread, it doesn't say refrigerate after opening, does it? No. Yeah. So. I think it's just it's just for funsies. Yeah, college is great because you get to learn what everybody's parents put in the fridge. And yeah. yeah. Are you guys putting <laughs> fruits in the fridge? Fruit? No. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I do. Uh, it depends. It depends. It depends. Still depends. Put it depends. Like huge like, fridge. Like, like, orange, yeah. I wouldn't because it had the skin protects it. Okay, actually, not going to lie. Orange I didn't ever put oranges in the fridge until like this year. Yeah. And then I started Game doing changer. that. Game changer. And it looked Damn. It like, it, they taste, should definitely like, go. It's so refreshing <laughs> when exactly. you take that. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Take it out. Okay, it's like, yeah. you're like, oh, like, I think. Yeah, I was like, wait. Like, I'm a big green apple guy. That's that's another guilty pleasure, I guess. Granny Smith? Yeah, Granny Smith. Oh, all the way. Like, any other apple is. I like golden delicious. Honey crisp. Honey crisp. Oh, honey crisp. Oh, honey crisp. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I do think like green apples are really nice when they're out of the fridge. Like they got the nice refreshing, like <laughs> sort of, sort of ASMR thing. with kosher. True. True. I feel like anything that has like a good amount of like <laughs> sour flavor to yeah. it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that's where the oranges yeah. and the green Although apples. I do, like, th- I do think like fridge just having, makes it better. It, having it out on the table does make the flavor a little bit more potent. Mm. I don't know if it necessarily makes the eating experience that much better. Mm. Also, I feel like it probably goes bad quicker. Can I ask a question then? When yeah. we learned from our parents in college, do you clean your air fryer every time you use it? I don't air fry. Uh, every uh, time? Every time. Uh, uh, I put tinfoil uh, down, though, so like it stays mm-hmm. kind yeah. of clean. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Sometimes. I did when I first got an air fryer, and then I was like, wait, this is such a pain. It has to clean every single time. <laughs> no, I I mean, especially if I just it's like... It's convenient. 
Right. Yeah. If like if I didn't like the make fire. anything that like had like like if a it has like goop grease. or like cheese, or <laughs> then yeah, then you're gonna like no sauce. Like when like, it's goop. Like, like, there's sauce, you know. It's just like a glob of stuff. Yeah. I'm cleaning out the globs, but like dry things, dry dry things like like some chicken nuggets or something. Like if it didn't leave like a ton of crumbs in there, I'm not gonna clean it up. Yeah. Facts. Do you? I don't drink coffee. Who here drinks coffee? I just Slaves bought a coffee maker. Coffee. Coffee. I don't I love coffee. coffee. Do you, if you have a mug, it makes me irritated. And all you drink out of it is coffee. Are you washing the mug? Yes. Oh, yeah. actually, that is a good really? question because I I will rinse it, but I won't go like scoop, 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 scoop. I, I'm gonna use it again. I, I'm just gonna rinse in the move. I feel like it's Aww. like a. It's like a cast iron thing. Yeah, oh, like the just, flavor like, seeps just in. Seeps yeah. the flavor. Oh, my God. oh, wow. You know? Interesting. That's yeah, not too OCD I'm, I'm for that. I'm washing my mugs. I'm too OCD. Yeah, every time. washing my mugs every time. About dishes? Yeah, that's why I keep all my dishes in my like, bedroom. I drink water. I drink <laughs> under your bed? <laughs> no, no, no. I just like, I just, I just do them. <laughs> I, just, I just do them and put them in my cabinet like inside my room somewhere. Just so like, I don't know. Yo, I mean, I, yeah, I always wash my mug because I like, I, I sometimes it's, just drink pure water irrational. out of a mug. So like, Bro. Oh, I don't want my pure water to taste like. When you wake up in the morning, it's like. Ceramic <laughs> 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 yeah. plates. Well, He's I'm not again. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, Izzy, did you have any guilty pleasures? Like, was it Survivor? I'll agree with Survivor. Survivor? Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite season? Oh, God. There's so many. Um. David versus Goliath is good. Blood versus yeah. Water seasons are good. Uh, yeah. um, awesome. The. Wait. Micronesia, fans versus favorites. Oh, I haven't watched that either. It's an old one, that's but... That's with poverty, right? Yeah, that one's really good. Uh, heroes versus villains. Yeah, so. that's like the OG. I think that's the first one I watched. Oh, yeah. 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 I've got to get on the Survivor grind. Low key. Like, it's so seen, addicting. Guys, seen, catch like, me on Survivor. One like, Once I start a season, I'm Ooh. done with it in like two or three days. No, it's bad. Once I start uh -oh. it and like learn the characters, then I have to remember where everyone is. And I just, I finish it in like three days. Oh. You guys know what the premise is, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. generally Not, challenges for it's, money. It's like it's, a reality show. You like are stranded on an island and you like have no food, basically no water. Like you just starve and then you do <laughs> challenges to like you know, get rewards like food or to stay in the game to not be voted out by the other people on the island. And then whoever's like last person standing gets a million dollars. So it's like wow. total drama. Yeah, that's basically, <laughs> it's basically the live action <laughs> total drama. Island. Be. But it's a good show because the winner always deserves to win. Like you don't win on accident because it's a very hard thing to do to oh, okay. get to yeah. that. So you never, you never feel like, oh, somebody got robbed. Um, sometimes you might, sometimes you might, but but sometimes you, they vote people out because that person's gonna win, and you're like, I don't want you to get a million dollars, and you will if you make it to the end. So everyone votes them out because so the people who are voted out. Crazy. You gotta play dumb. You gotta be like, crazy. Yeah, because like, rocks. when it gets to top three, the people who were voted out are the jury, so they decide based on the top three people. Okay, who are we choosing to win the million dollars? So you can't if you burn bridges in a way with people that you were close to, they might not turn around and vote for you at the mm -hmm. end to win a million dollars. So you, Ooh, you're voting people out, but you have to experiment. vote them out in a way no, that they'll still want to give That's you money so yeah. when you cheated them out of a million dollars. Speaking of social experiments, yeah. have you guys heard of MILF Manor? Bro. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> not, not to I'm raise intrigued. the rating of this to PG-13, but oh my That's... goodness, that show is wacky. <laughs> have, you heard of, have you heard of Couples to Thruples? My girlfriend just showed me that. I'm like, this is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Another guilty pleasure is Love Island UK. My dad uh, watches my that. I'm like, what is wrong Actually, with you? <gasps> my dad watches <laughs> <laughs> Clip on my face. My dad watches Love Island UK. Oh, look at the peaks. It's peaking. The true, true. Damn. Um, Nick M. Dot R. <laughs> Guilty pleasure songs. <laughs> Big Bump. <bo> <laughs> I love M. Dot R. Um, you know M. Dot R. Jesse? No. He's like a Jamaican dance hall artist. Yeah. But he's from like the UK, right? And he gets a lot of you know, the big bumble clock guy. Oh. <laughs> so basically, people are calling him like illegitimate because you know like, he's a white guy from the UK who kind of has like a heavy like Jamaican kind of accent. I don't yeah. know if it's like a actual natural or like you know not. Yeah. But like, you know, the Jamaicans are like, nah, this guy is valid. He's valid. Yeah, like he like knows the culture. He like comes to Jamaica all the time. They Stand. love him there. And like he's dropping some bangers and he's like popping off on social media. You probably What's the name? Never heard. M dot R. Okay. Now you've I'm definitely not. heard his one song. I've seen him on Instagram just based off of like that how you described him. Yeah, that yeah. one. <laughs> he was in that. I can't repeat the first one. No, 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 no,
uh, like Hershey's Kiss, things like that. It oh, sounds yeah. so basic, but yeah, one of those, but not like all the time. Uh, binging like anime shows. Ooh, okay. I like finished Attack on Titan in like one sitting. Like Oof. it was. You watch one whoa, piece? Like a 24 yeah. hours? Like, yeah. Whoa. It was like one. That's of crazy. Those. Well, it's like what, three seasons, four seasons? Yeah. It you, was, watch, you watch One Piece? No. How that's, many that's, hours was that? <laughs> yo, you, Dude, can't, that's you like, can't even watch No, that was. That. Harry, yeah, Harry Potter, I did that one too. Um, just like binging a lot of films and shows is like probably Dang my biggest. That. I stopped doing that though. I don't even watch shows now, but yeah. back in the day, that would definitely be my guilty yeah. pleasure. Um, yeah, I definitely took like majority of my day, like just nonstop summertime kind of activity, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Um, last kind of like fun question before we skid out a lot of here. Um, if you didn't have to sleep, how would you fill your time? Oh, ooh. I would. I mean, I don't know. Right now, I've been really trying to like hone a certain set of skills that could like let me do the things I like more. Whether that's in terms of like stuff that's music related, where it's like you know learning how to maybe like do like little like producing for like some of my friends who are trying to record stuff or yeah. whether I'm trying to like help film a video for somebody st like stuff that I that I ultimately would think would be really cool to do like as a full-time profession mm -hmm. like kind of maybe just like double down on like honing those skills and so I could tie that into stuff I enjoy yeah mm -hmm. uh, kind of maybe a basic answer but no, I like that I definitely like write more music and songs because I have like legitimately no time right now with two practices school um, work, club activities, girlfriends. So if I just had like eight hours, I know in that time I could like write yeah. more music and be creative, even for fun, not for like any commercial purposes. Yeah, yeah. Same, same. Actually, my answer is pretty much the same because I actually I, I find that I uh, I do a lot of good work late at night. Like I I often That's... come up with like a an idea because I I also do write music, and like I also feel like I just I I don't have a lot of time to put into my own music right now. But like. Yeah, I don't know that late night vibe. Like it just goes. It's just yeah, you're and you sort you're sort of like, sort of frees your mind from like because everybody else is asleep, you know. So you have no like distractions or like have, having to worry about that. Like somebody might be like, oh, I need you to do this. I need you to do yeah. that. So you kind of can just focus purely on the creative aspect and yeah, no, that's what I would do. I write more music. I like that. I'm probably yeah. I'm not unique. I want to write more music. Um, <laughs> I'm also a film major. I like writing scripts. Oh, scripts wow. are really, really fun. Just like writing stories in general. I just, it's something I, I really enjoy doing, but it's always so hard to carve the time out. Facts. Um, it's not an excuse, but I will get better at it. Um, but yeah, doing that, I'd love to drum more, even though I probably couldn't if everyone else is still asleep. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, then they would subsequently not be asleep. Um, and work out more. I don't have musical talent, so I would not probably, <laughs> <laughs> although I probably could develop some if I wasn't sleeping, but I don't know, like one possibility was I could take like a night job and then retire in like half the time mm. and be like 15. Okay. Like <laughs> she was thinking. <laughs> I had time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, either that or on a more short term scale, I would just get everything done in like twice the time and then travel. Yeah, with yeah, the rest of it yeah, yeah, yeah go yeah. new places you would just have so much more time on your hands so i would just get everything done in like a much shorter condensed period of time and mm. then just like yeah i'll just like be in europe every week or something so. yeah. <laughs> low, low key and low key if you didn't have to sleep that whole time like you might see a lot of crazy like crazy stuff you know because yeah. like yeah. stuff that goes on at night while you're sleeping like just goes past the streets and, exactly. and i won't get jet lag because exactly. i don't sleep so yeah there you go yeah yeah, that's, Ooh, that's a good point too. That is good. <laughs> she thought. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's gonna. Ask one more question. Of course. Sorry, right. I don't want to keep you guys too long. No. Because you said um, your family's very musical, right? Yeah. How? I, this makes sense for all of you. If you guys want to answer this question, how has your like family relationships affected you playing music? Because mm. with me personally, mm. my dad's a musician, and it kind of burned me out because I was it was too much of a role model, right? Yeah. It's too easy mm. to compare. So like. Uh, whether your family was musical or wasn't, how has that kind of shaped your route to like being in bands and stuff like that? Um, yeah, I'll answer that first, actually. Um, cause Question stealing. <laughs> Sorry, I just like to hear myself talk a lot. Um, uh, so my mom like kind of forced me into like classical piano lessons when I was six. Kind of just like my mom was very much the like I'm gonna throw you in every activity possible because she's like a you gotta be a go getter, gotta try things. Uh, so I did classical piano, hated it, dropped out, didn't learn, nothing stuck. 
Uh, and then tried guitar maybe for a year. Again, didn't didn't like it. Whatever. You know, it's very much like my mom forced me to do it. Couldn't get a hold of it. And she she did um she sings in her uh, church choir and she knows how to play piano. My uh, grandfather was actually you know in the olden days strip clubs they didn't have aux so he was actually a pianist for strip clubs. That's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. No, literally. Super No, literally. My grandpa's a G. Rest in peace. Yeah. But so. So I did feel kind of forced, but you know. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, so I did kind of feel forced to do it, but then crazy enough, so when I was like in uh, middle school, not to get too deep, but I kind of had like body issues, and I was like every day after middle school, I was like, I'm gonna work out. Did, wouldn't want to work out. I'm fucking like 11 years old. I'm not gonna do that. So <laughs> the grind starts. Yeah, and so I, but I would do it while I was watching TV, and as a procrastinator, you know, we had a piano in my house, and I was like, I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna play the piano. And so, to avoid doing my ab workouts, I would, l like, because I kind of knew how to read sheet music from the, like, six years of piano lessons that I wasn't paying attention to, and then I just kind of got into it, where I learned how to play again, learned how to write, and then my mom gave me a ukulele as a birthday present one year, and then I just kept writing and writing, and I kind of just went full throttle with it, but it was on my own accord, and that what, that's what pushed me, because I couldn't do it if I was being forced, but if I, like, stumbled upon it by myself, then... All, all is on and thankfully my mom you know also the G she is she's an accountant and you know she's like Katie the one thing I could like say to you about your career and your life is like just do whatever you want to do just don't be an accountant so I had her full blessing to do music um, even though that's not really my goal right now in life I mean music is my goal but not performing per se I think I just want to be in this industry no matter what is offered and make a real substantial impact on the world um, whether that be in music or honestly any endeavor, but that's kind of my start. I can, that was a good, really good answer. I got to piggyback off the two, kind of with like the discovering it on your own accord. Like neither of my parents had any musical background, you know, like my dad definitely like, you know, is a big music fan, has been to a lot of concerts. My mom uh, was more so like a uh, teenager, uh, young adult in the 90s, so that's where her music taste is. But, you know, I was kind of discovering all that older rock music in high school and was like, yo, this is what I love listening to. How cool would it be if I could just play it myself? And like I, I remember right after I saw like The Who in like Connecticut, uh, I bought a guitar like the next day, my first one. And like that kind of, you know, set me on my path. And I think, um, you know, yeah, just kind of like it being something that I fully discovered on my own and was like kind of like a passion project for myself. That's kind of like pulled me along and like led me to like, you know, where I am now. Because I do agree that if it was something that would probably be, have been forced on me, I probably wouldn't have, you know, taken the same liking or appreciation that I have to it. And also, it was really cool. Like, my dad set up one of my like one of the shows in high school that he went to. He saw me playing, so it inspired him to learn guitar. So he bought like this two thousand dollar Martin acoustic guitar, really good one. And like, it was right when I started going to college. He's like sending me some videos of him playing "Smoke on the Water" here and there, right? Wow. And then like a month later, I'm like, "Hey, how's the guitar going?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm just too busy. I don't have time." And I'm like, "No, like, uh, there was so much potential." But yeah. Yeah. Smoke on the Water is the first song I learned on piano. That's yeah. crazy. On piano, that's funny. That's like six notes total. Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's like chopsticks, you know? <laughs> um, I'd say for me, like, again, like with, I mean, yeah, my, my parents don't know much about music, but my, like, they both listen to it a lot, especially my dad. Um, he got me into bands like the Violent Femmes oh, and nice. like the B-52s. Um, just great, awesome bands. I've seen both of them with him. Thank <laughs> Um, it's a real big B-52 fan joke. Um, anyway, but yeah, like, he, he really likes it. And same, same with, like, movies and stuff. Like, obviously, he was never in, like, the film industry or whatever, but he's always been, um, he, like, knows so much about movies, like, so much more than I do, and, like, I'm trying to be in the industry, so it's, like, it's very cool. He's a very smart person about that. But, yeah, they're, they're both very, um, like, they've had to go to, like, our marching band shows, like, me and my siblings for 10 years. Or, or like 15 years or something like that it was like a long time they had to go to like you know like the state finals every october and and um stuff like that they've always been like super supportive so thanks mom and dad love you both yeah for for me um it's interesting so like yeah my parents never like forced any music on me it they kind of just like they kind of just did it and it it kind of fell into my lap sort of um like at least with the clarinet, like that was just through the school. They were like, 
you got like you here's an, you here's instruments you can play and like that was the one I could make a sound out of like all the other trumpet none of that I was like it, I can't even make a noise on this so I just picked the clarinet because of that it's like easy to make a sound um, and then just sort of like on my own accord ended up like getting pretty good at it and they definitely like encouraged me to practice and stuff like that but I I think I was the one who like asked for lessons um, stuff like that and um, I got pretty good at it and then by around by the time I was in high school I was kind of I was a little like I was a little burnt out on like practicing that instrument so much I kept doing band through high school but I pretty much like was just just playing the songs that we were playing I wasn't like trying to you know further my technique um and then yeah like like I said my senior year I I like I just had like a like the the summer before that I just had an inspiration to write a song and it was really interesting because after having that inspiration, writing the song, and like deciding I wanted to pick up guitar, I found out that like, like I knew my mom is a singer. Um, she's also an actress, so I'm also doing acting now. It's, and I was never put into acting either. That was also all of my own accord. Um, but I found out that she like she used to be in a band and that they were like writing originals at one time too. Yeah. And like, so just it, it's been really interesting for me discovering music and now acting has helped me learn a lot more about my parents as well because mm -hmm. um, I knew my mom was an actress but she didn't she didn't tell me a lot about it and really until I started acting myself and I was like well what did you do like I want like you know I don't I don't know that much about your career yeah because um, she she stopped before I was born like pretty much like a few years before um, and so yeah that that's just been really cool to kind of like kind of go on that journey with them and with myself and just sort of discovering discovering my own passion with that and and then like being able to, to sort of learn more about them and, and they, they're very supportive of it and they uh, yeah they love that I do music so it's it's really good it's definitely awesome. awesome yeah um, well damn thank you guys again um, any final things you want to get off to like your listeners I know you guys said you guys are dropping an EP this Friday, can we have like a, a name or anything you want to give us? Just a girl. Just a girl. Just a girl. Oh, just a girl. That's the name. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh. It's a. Uh, it's just a little tip of the iceberg. Snip it. Uh -huh. so, yeah. The whole thing. The whole thing. The whole pie. There's yeah. more to the, It's just a piece world, of the pie, you could say. The world. Oh, is, you the world know, there. Is I think. Uh, uh, listen, it, listen, listen very closely to the songs. You'll get that reference. Okay. This we're, is a real Koshin joke right now. We're really hyped about it's deep. It's deep. We're really yeah. hyped about uh, you know the stuff we've been working on super hard yeah. to make you guys here. So yeah. Yeah. check it out. Awesome. Yeah. Koshin loves you. Only surprisingly, only one song is explicit. So that's oh, good wow. for us. Which one? Just, just, a just a girl. Just a girl. Oh, just a girl. The title okay. track. Yeah. All right, well. And then uh, anything for Green Fest coming up this week that you want to just share? And, uh, yeah, come to the rest of our Green Fest events. If you aren't familiar with the week of events, you can look on the Green Fest Instagram, and it has a week-long schedule of events there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of fun ones coming up. And, and yeah, if you haven't bought your concert ticket yet, buy it. Yeah. So, cheapest concert you'll ever go to. Facts, get your ticket. <laughs> $5. Thank you so much. This was an interview uh, with... Koshin and the chair of Green Fest brought to you by KCR College Radio in collaboration with the Aztec Music Group. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. This was Thank, you guys so much. Thank you, KCR. Thank you. Great questions. Can I push Very good. Can I push Thank you. Thank you. AMG. I don't know.